Morning folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do this morning is I thought we would just take off from this camp area that we built the other night. And there's a good stretch out here of pine hardwood mix with some oaks in there and some hickory. I think what we're going to do is we're going to walk out there and do a little squirrel hunt. Haven't shot a squirrel yet this year with the old smoke pole, so I'm kind of getting the itch. Go out here and see if I can't get myself a squirrel and take it home to my father-in-law. He's been itching for one all year and he's 80 years old getting a little bit old to go out hunting for himself so i figure i'll go take some meat home to the family stay with me guys okay so when i'm squirrel hunting what i'm really doing is i'm watching with my peripheral vision for movement and that is movement up and down a tree something sliding up and down a tree or branches that are moving up in the trees and then i want to study those branches to see if the wind is moving those branches and other branches around them are moving or if it's a singular branch or singular tree that's moving in a linear line where that squirrel is running across, bouncing the branch, going from one to another. And if that's the case, and I've identified my quarry, then I'm just going to sneak up within shotgun range with my flintlock, and I'm going to sit down beside a tree and wait for that squirrel to expose himself. Okay, the other thing that I'm looking for when I'm out squirrel hunting is I'm looking for sign. Anytime you're hunting or trapping, you're looking for sign. Now, there's a lot of hickory nuts out here on the ground. There's some shells over here, and here's one that's been chewed open. You can see the chewing on the side of that. And that's a squirrel. And in this area, there are a lot of opened up shells in this area. Here's one right here that's opened up. I don't see any chew marks on it. That doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't opened by a squirrel. But there's quite a few hickories in this area, quite a few pines. And that's exactly what we're looking for for habitat to hunt squirrel, is hickories. Okay guys, here's the first gray squirrel of the year with my flintlock. I'm in an area that's got five or six of them I saw running around. So we're going to get reset, get reloaded, see if we can get another one. I'm out here in an area that's mixed pine and hardwoods and I walked in and sat down for a few minutes and saw at least four gray squirrels running close in this area. Blasted the first one with my flintlock here I just got reloaded going to sit back down for a little while give the area time to cool down see if any of them come back out stay with me guys okay guys so there's something I want to show you real fast <clears throat> while we're out here squirrel hunting I've got my <coughs> mesh piece of cotton material here they call them snipers veils for me, it's just a multi-purpose piece of gear. I usually wear that around my neck, and I can use it for a lot of things out here from camouflage to wiping sweat off my brow, whatever the case may be. But I can also use this for a game bag, and I want to show you how I tie a game bag out of this and attach it to my haversack once I have game, now that we have taken our first squirrel. Okay, so this is really pretty easy. All you're gonna do is take this thing and spread it out. And this is kind of a rectangle shape. It's not exactly square. You got stickers in there, you got to get them out. And I lay it rectangle side like this, and I throw my game in the middle of it. I'll take two of the sides up, just like this, and I'll tie them down fairly close, about like that. Then these other two sides, this becomes a pouch at this point, and this is my tie off, and I'll show you how I tie that to my haversack. It's just a quick overhand knot. Okay, so now that we've got our game wrapped up here, we've got one overhand knot on there, I'll take this and put it through the strap of my haversack, just like this, and bring it all the way up to that knot. Usually I'll have that knot on the outside like that, and then I'll just tie another overhand knot in it, just like this, and that gives me a secure bag with nothing but corners sticking out, that there's no openings, that squirrel's not going to fall out of there, and if I get more, I can just add them to that bag. I've got my haversack with my shooting supplies in it, my canteen of water, my knife, and my fire kit. And that's what I've got out here today, plus my 
62 caliber or 20 gauge smoothbore flintlock is what we're hunting squirrels with today. We are primed and ready. If we see another squirrel, and we're on half cock, so hopefully we're going to see another one here in a minute. Well, guys, we only got to one squirrel this morning, and uh, I'm going to head back. I got some work I got to do this afternoon, but I thank you for joining me for this quick squirrel hunt this morning. We only been at it for probably an hour and a half. We got one. I saw four more, but as soon as I shot the one, of course they scattered, and uh, I sat tight after I reloaded. They never came back. Of course, I'm talking on video and things like that too, so that keeps things away. But we had a good time shooting the one. I'm going to take that home to my father-in-law. I'm sure he'll enjoy that for his dinner tonight. Okay, so I brought this rat back here to the stump at the base camp. I'm not really so I could do a cleaning video on squirrels because I've already done it. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to show you a lot of guys I've seen make comments on YouTube about hunting small game with shotguns. And oh, all, all that shot is going to be in there. If you match your shot properly versus the distance you're shooting your game, you shouldn't have that many chunks of shot to contend with. This squirrel was shot at about 35 yards with a 60 grain measure, equal volume of shot and powder. But you're going to get a lot of spread. Now here's the advantage of the shotgun over the rifle for small game like a 22 rifle, especially in early season. Right now we're talking early fall. The trees have not lost their leaves yet. When you've got animals crawling around up in the trees that you've got to shoot, and you can't see exactly where that where you're hitting that animal. You can't take a bead on a certain spot of that animal because leaves are in the way, small branches are in the way, and things like that. A shotgun can make the difference between you eating food and you missing with a 22, and you don't get another opportunity. So I want to cut this guy open and show you how much shots actually in this animal. Okay, guys. So I've got this dude stripped off, and looking at him, he's got. A broken leg here I'd say that was probably either from the fall or maybe where a piece of shot hit him he has a definitely a shot hole right here in his chest cavity that's probably what killed him dead in a doornail because he was dead in snot when I came up on him and he's got a piece of shot that went through his leg here I can't tell if that's a piece of shot or not I actually went too deep with my knife right here when I cut the back of the fur to strip him off. It looks like there's a hole here, probably a through and through from the other side where the pellet didn't penetrate all the way. So really, you know, I haven't found, to be honest with you, I haven't found one pellet in this animal. There may have been some in the gut somewhere when I was cleaning them out. Let me get up here and get the rest of his lungs out of here. And I'll see if I feel anything in there. His lungs and his heart. I haven't pulled them out yet. Okay, there's a hole right here in his lung, for sure, where he was hit. Nothing in the heart. His heart is, com is completely intact, but he was definitely lung shot right there. So that's definitely the kill shot, but there's no shot anywhere in this guy that I can find. So am I worried about eating shot because I kill small game with shot? Not necessarily. I mean, if I, if I shoot it from a long distance, and I'm using a pretty good size shot, and I actually used six shot on this animal, you know, I might have one or two I got to pick out, but it's not like you're going to have 20 or 30 pellets in there by any means, by any stretch. Okay, so let's talk about the knife I used real quick because I know somebody's going to ask me. This is just an old timer trapper. Not the best knife in the world, 29 bucks. Really, really sharp. I obviously cut too deep into the back here when I was splitting the skin, so it's plenty sharp. It's got a one way cutting saw on it, which I don't like the fact it only cuts one direction, but it's a bone saw. It is good for. Striking a ferro rod, it's got a good nice 90 degree spine on it. It is a locking saw. What I really like about this from the 21st century aspect of things, when I'm hunting with a flintlock is, it has this scratch all built into it. I guess what that's supposed to be. But it is almost exactly the right size to be a touch hole pick for my flintlock. And I really like that aspect of this knife. And then it's got a pair of tweezers on it as well for pulling out ticks and splinters and things like that. But for a $29 knife, you know, in a backup situation where you're going to put this thing in your pack and only use it when you have to or use it for skinning or whatever the case may be, seems to hold a pretty good edge. Okay, guys, well, I'm Dave Canterbury. I appreciate you joining me for this video today. Just a quick squirrel hunt.
quick discussion on squirrel, squirrel hunting, hunting with shotguns, a little bit of strategy and things like that. I thank you for your views. I thank you for your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, my friends, affiliates, and sponsors. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.